birch bark canoe, Chimon, is a timeless indigenous innovation, truly of the land and the water. You could talk, you could bring a person from a thousand years ago to a canoe like this in the present and they would know what it is and how to use it. The oldest archaeological record of a canoe dates back 5,000 years earlier than the invention of the wheel, suggesting that perhaps we're more water people than we are land people. Birch bark canoes were the cars of the past, and these waterways were the highways. Although the biggest difference would be you didn't have to worry about getting a pothole in one of these guys. It could be very dangerous paddling in a thin birch bark canoe like this. Luckily, there are spare parts to be found all along this coast. All of the components of the birch bark canoe could be harvested from our forests. So you can see this pattern matches and resembles the birch bark that could be harvested from birch bark trees in our forest. And this black pitch here was actually made from spruce sap and animal fat mixed together. And it sealed the seams between the waterproof uh, birch bark. And to tie together on the gunnels, they used spruce roots. And they would use other uh, hardwoods such as ash, um, for other interior designs. This canoe, of course, isn't actually made of birch bark. It's a replica made with fiberglass. It's a little bit more durable, as we're not as skilled at uh, harvesting the traditional um, components to build and maintain a birch bark canoe. One of the names for this canoe is a Montreal canoe. So it's 36 feet long, can hold up to 16 people. Uh, usually it was paddled in the voyageur times with a half a dozen paddlers or so, and they carried a large amount of cargo. Their cargo, of course, being first for the fur trade. We also have a North Canoe. Our North Canoe is 26 feet long and it resembles a birch bark canoe as well um, that was used traditionally in the fur trade um, to travel north from Lake Superior. This replica birch bark canoe built in northern Quebec may not be big enough for me to paddle, but it is certainly of the craftsmanship to get an idea of the materials built from the land the birch bark, the spruce root that sews it together, the cedar on the interior, um, and just getting an idea about how the builder would build this on a larger scale to paddle. This one you might have to hang on the ceiling of your cabin. Today, as we glide along in the canoe, I want you to imagine the freedom that paddlers of the past felt cutting across the surface of the water. Luckily, we can still do this today. The birch bark canoe is truly a timeless vessel of the land and the water.
Can you imagine commuting to work in a canoe? There wouldn't be any more road rage. <laughs>